Um, we're getting ready to get started. Um, hopefully a few more folks will uh, join in. Um, thank you so much for taking time of your evening uh, to, to hear about our um, project that we are very excited to present um, for your community. My name is Lisette Acevedo. I work for the Transportation and Public Works Department, specifically the Capital Delivery Division, and I'm the program manager for the Mobility Infrastructure Team. Um, we want to present today uh, about an intersection improvement project that was um, chosen as part of the 218 bond program um, for your community. And um, Derek White um, is the project manager and he will be uh, presenting here shortly. Uh, we also have Jeffrey Allen, who's our public communication specialist, and um, he's making sure that we don't have any technological issues. Also, please be aware that this meeting will be recorded and um, it will be available for um, uh, public viewing. Je Jeff can provide those details um, at the end of the meeting. If you please will write your questions on the chat, I will try to answer those questions as Derek is moving through the presentation or um, at the end of the presentation. With all that, um, Derek, would you take it away? Will do, Lisette. Thank you for that kind introduction. Um, this meeting is the community meeting for Northdale Street at Las Vegas Trails, which is an intersection improvement project. It's uh, city project number 101591. It's within the city council district number three. And council member uh, Brian Bird is uh, is is the uh, council member. Uh, is is Mr. Bird? Here, does he wants to give give a uh, brief introduction or discussion uh, before we get started with the rest of the presentation? If not, we can uh, continue. So, uh, my name is Derek White. Like I said, said I'm the senior project manager on this project, so I'm in charge of making sure this project keeps moving. Um, I'm in the trans, uh, Transportation and Public Works Department, Capital Delivery Division, Mobility Infrastructure Team. So with that, let's get started with the agenda. Apologize, let's get started with the agenda. Um, there we go. So on the agenda, on the background, I'm just gonna discuss briefly on how this project came to fruition. We're going, to, we're going to look at the location of the project. We're going to discuss some of the existing site conditions um, uh, at the project site. Um, also, I'm going to touch briefly on the intersection control evaluation that we asked our consultant to, um, to, to come to put together during the conceptual design of this uh, project. And I'm going to briefly discuss uh, some intersection types and give their comparisons. And with, with the information that we receive from the consultant, we're going to look at the proposed improvements. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're going to look at the benefits of this improvement as well as the construction schedule. So on, on May 5th, 2018, voters consider Proposition A which included intersection improvements. So, and, and then city council adopted appropriation ordinance to allocate budgets to, uh, to projects of the uh, pro uh, bond program. So this project was identified with other intersections throughout the city in, in, uh, in the 2018 bond program. And specifically for this intersection, for intersection improvements, this was to enhance the traffic and pedestrian safety by reconstructing the intersections and installing ADA ramps and sidewalks. So it's fair to say that this location, the project is located um, between midway, maybe between uh, I-30 and Camp Blue, and it's east of uh, Loop A-20. So what this uh, area photograph shows, it shows the existing conditions. And as you can see, this is a controlled intersection with stop signs and Las Vegas trail 
on the north side is a four lane divided roadway, and on the south end, there's uh, five five lanes on the south end. And Normandale actually go to the intersection with four lanes on the north end and two lanes on the south. End. But as you can see, there's no uh, there's no crosswalks, there's no ramps, there's no accessibility for pedestrians, which creates an unsafe condition. Condition. Uh, so during the conceptual stage of the project, city staff asked the consultant to develop a intersection control evaluation, which which is pretty much what we call an ICE report. And this ICE report compares the existing intersection with a proposed signalized intersection. Uh, what, uh, in addition, it compares a proposed roundabout intersection. So it compares all all these three scenarios or these alternatives. And the ICE report is a data-driven performance-based report that pretty much evaluates alternative uh, alternative designs of intersections, looks at the geometry and compares the geometry, as well as the control solutions. And the result of the ICE report was that the roundabout was determined to be the preferred alternative. Uh, so compared to other alternatives, it provided efficient operations, it provided enhanced safety uh, from a vehicle and pedestrian standpoint, and, and also it provided the lowest life cycle cost compared to, to, to the alternatives, to the other alternatives. So looking at the different types of intersections, so comparing uh, Comparing the, the different intersections, the traffic signal intersection type is pretty much has higher conflicts. So there's there's several conflict points um, that that involves vehicles, that involves pedestrians. That can be an issue. That can be an indication of I would say can be an unsafe condition. With, with all those conflict points, you can have accidents or fatalities. Uh, you're pretty much waiting in line with a signal uh, traffic type intersection. Also, this involves a use of control devices to, to ensure the safety of the uh, intersection, which involves spending quite a bit of money, significant amount of money for infrastructure. But compared to a roundabout, there's conflict points. And, and this, these conflict points can be compared to a traffic signal, they can decrease up to 75% of conflict points. So this is this is an indication that roundabouts are safer um, than traffic signals. Also, there's hard you hardly wait going through a roundabout. So um, the operations would be improved. It's also uh, environmentally friendly because the uh, carbon dioxide emissions um, uh, throughout the atmosphere is reduced and there's no control devices. So so you're not really spending money in order to make the intersection more, more safe. Your control is actually other drivers. You have to control how other, you know, watch out for other drivers. So there's really no uh, additional uh, infrastructure that is needed in order to, to uh, control vehicles through the, through the intersection. So with the result of the, of the, uh, of the, of the alternative, our design consultant came up or developed a design schematic of the proposed improvements. And you can see in this slide, this is a schematic over or superimposed over aerial that shows um, how the how the geometry is going to look after construction. And what you see here on Las Vegas Trail, there's a bypass lane that's going northbound. And going into the inner, going into the roundabout, the geometry here is designed at low speeds. So, so is when you're driving, when you're driving through the intersection, it could, you, you might feel like you're driving through a school zone if you want to compare that. And around the intersection, you see we have uh, sidewalk pads for pedestrians. We have crosswalks and ramps. And in the and at each island, we have refuge areas for pedestrians. So if you get stuck at the intersection because there's increased uh, traffic flow, you know you have a place to 
to to uh, refuge yourself or protect yourself because you know you you don't want to try to cross from one end to the next you know in one go so you have you have some room to to where you can be safe as a pedestrian so to summarize this intersection is going to be a complete reconstruction to the roundabout intersection to a roundabout in, intersection we plan to install new accessible pads and ramps and crosswalks we're going to modify the existing uh, sidewalks to conform to the ADA regulations. And I forgot to mention here, we're going to have a left turn lane that's going to be dedicated, or it's going to be a left turn only lane that's going, that's going to uh, go into this on, on the northbound of Las Vegas, northbound lanes of North Be Las Vegas uh, into the uh, gas station. So it can, and also there's an additional component of this uh, project, which is public art, which is was allocated for 20, 20, 2018 bonds. Uh, that's going to be part of this. It was selected for public art. Uh, so it's going to enhance the character of the, the neighborhood uh, with public art at the center of the, uh, the roundabout. And the estimated construction cost is around 2.2 million, million dollars. So that, with the roundabout, there's certain benefits. Like I said, there's we're going to improve the mobility and safety of pedestrians, and that's because we're going to add some some crosswalks. We're going to add some refuge areas and the medians, and we're going to add some uh, some walking paths, like so, like uh, like uh, sidewalks, and and also some ramps for for ADA to be ADA compliant. And then also, it's going to enha enhance driver safety. So remember, I said there's going to be those conflict point between vehicles and pedestrians. So it's going to have an increased uh, potential of, of, of conflicts compared to a traffic signal. And it's going to improve the intersection operations. So it's going to be environmental friendly because there's no stop and go. It's pretty much hardly a wait. So it's going to improve the environment uh, with decreased uh, with decreased amount of uh, carbon dioxide. Um, emissions into the into the atmosphere and it's also going to improve the uh, traffic operations uh, there's not going to be too much stop and go or waiting the neighborhood is going to be enhanced by public art so that's a that's a big benefit and 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 for the schedule right now we're working at 60 percent design so we're at the 60 percent stage the construction plans to start in winter 2021 the estimation, the estimated duration of the project is about ten months or less. Uh, so, with that, uh, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, you can you can uh, email me, you, or you can give me a give me a call. Um, I'll be happy to talk to you. So, with that, I'll be happy to answer answer any questions. I have. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I didn't see any questions in the chat, but you're welcome to unmute and ask questions. Thank you. Okay, what order do you want us to do it in? Uh, Jeff, do you want to help with that? Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Uh, you can go ahead and go first. Everyone else is muted yeah. at the moment, so feel oh, free to okay. ask your question. Well, I have several. Uh, are you having to take over any property from either retail or residential to expand this roundabout, or will it fit into the current footprint? Yes, it fits into the current footprint. We're not really acquiring it right away. Okay. Uh, we are improving some sidewalks, so we have yet to to uh, determine whether we need some temporary construction easement. Is a possibility that we will need some temporary construction construction easements to. to uh, to do the reconstruction or to uh, to redo the sidewalks, but other than that, we won't need to acquire it. Oh, well, that's good. Do you see a problem with emergency vehicles, which use that intersection a lot, with people being able to get out of the way of an emergency vehicle, say the fire trucks, within? Well, yeah, right. there's there's a uh, there's. There should, there should be any issues. I really don't have experience whether those vehicles cause an issue with emergency vehicle 
vehicles cause an issue, but there's in the center of the roundabout, there's a, a an emergency apron or there's an apron okay. where emergency vehicles uh, or vehicles can pull up closer into the center of the roundabout and try to get out of the way. So we have, we have that. Good to know. How about the city buses? Will they have any uh, trouble navigating that? No, no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't believe so because when we, the geometry of the roundabout is uh, we run like these, what we call truck temples through the roundabout to make sure that either they clear certain, you know, their tires clear with a certain uh, curb line. So, so I don't anticipate that, you know, buses will have any issues. Okay. Um, uh, and so um, the geometry of the roundabout is dictated by the design, what we call, and, and so we take into account the type of road that Las Vegas Trail really is and, and the kind of traffic that it has. So we know that that you have emergency, you know, vehicles and, and, and buses, you know, public buses, school buses, et cetera. So um, that's what dictates the size of the roundabout. Um, okay. So, and the apron is pretty large also. So the apron, it's there with the purpose of uh, for, it, for it to be manable. So all these large vehicles can uh, navigate the roundabout with no problem. Excellent. That's good to hear. Last question. Uh, this will be a huge change for this neighborhood. Will there be some form of tutorial or information given to the residents to prepare them of how to navigate this? Uh, we, we certainly uh, will have one more, uh, at least one more meeting that we will um, will have before we even attempt to go to construction and um, Hopefully, uh, maybe at that point, maybe we can have in-person meetings. Um, we we have uh, videos, we have materials. Um, you know, we recently completed the construction of a, a roundabout on the east side of the city, and we already shot a, a, a video of it, so people can actually see, you know, how it's operating right here in the city of Fort Worth. Um, so uh, we, we have a lot of materials available. It's just a matter of making them accessible so the residents would actually yeah. like 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 use them or look at them and I be, that, yeah yeah I, so, wonder if, I wonder if perhaps through the Fort Worth public school system they could also send out information to the families and the parents to make sure that absolutely they, absolutely they know how to navigate it because it, it's going to be very confusing I'm sure for a lot of people uh, we can certainly contact Western Hills um, you know, both the elementary and the high school that are just on the street and, and provide materials or, or maybe if, if, if they have a, a, a meeting, an in-person meeting later, you know, this fall with the parents, you know, the PTA, or, yeah. you know, maybe we can request to attend to be there. Um, the reason that this intersection was um, prioritized pretty high is because of the conf how confusing it is the way it is right now oh, with the, oh, the oh, audience. Me. Yeah. I've lived out here for 50 years. I know how confusing it can be. <laughs> so, so I think that um, I think the roundabout is going to be a, a big improvement, uh, but people are a little, uh, you know, we understand that yeah. when the people, you know, it's a new thing, but but we just constructed one in the on the east side of the, of the city and we, we shot a video of it and operations and it's working really well. So we have a lot of uh, materials like handouts and um, and information to, to, to provide to the residents. And we hope to come back and, and talk to you guys at least at least one more time, if not twice. Excellent. Thank you. Somebody else's turn. Lisette, we've had a few questions coming in through the chat as well. I see uh, at least three now. Yes. Um, so let's just go through the chat. Um, uh, you said the sidewalks will be redone. Does that mean the curse might move into our yards? Um, no, um, the sidewalks, some of the sidewalks are buckling uh, and, and, and they don't meet. Uh, actually, when we were doing our, our constructability uh, walkthrough, a lady came on a wheelchair and um, had to navigate a section of the sidewalk that was uh, had buckle and, ra and raise and um, it, it was a trip hazard. So we will be reconstructing the sidewalks where they are and the curbs will not move into your yards, actually, with the geometry of the roundabout, the curbs will be um, actually moving away from the yards in some areas. So, um, like Derek said, we we will not need to get additional uh, right-of-way for the project. And the, and the public right-of-way 
is from the back of the curb to about 10 feet into uh, a person's uh, yard. So there's that space that is called the parkway, which is the public right away. So we will not be acquiring any additional right away or, um, you know, making that space smaller. It says, uh, we will lose any of our trees. So we walk, when we walk the site, we identify a couple of, of, of uh, I will say maybe crypt myrtles or, or, or some of those bushes that are kind of like on the, um, by by that that it's like a I don't know if it's a home it's, it looks like um maybe like a like an apartment manager uh, office or of some area that a couple of those for sight distance will have to be removed but not major trees not a big trees in front of the uh, residents uh, pedestrian currently walk diagonal across the intersection from the apartment complex as a roundabout where the cars are not stopped, will there be a signage or something to discourage people from? Uh, so the so the advantage of the the the, the roundabout is that um, there's traffic only moving in one direction all the way across the roundabout. The traffic is one way. Okay, so it's always moving in the same direction. So the pedestrian has a lot less cars to worry about. Uh, and then with the refuge islands, you know, they get a chance to cross, you know, one side of the intersection at a time. Uh, what we find is that um, with with the with the with the circulatory movement and the slower speeds, the drivers have more time to actually watch for the pedestrians and yield to the pedestrians. There will be signs. Uh, there will be pedestrian, you know, signs. And then if, if there's an issue, uh, we can certainly, um, you know, add additional, you know, warning devices if there's a, if there's a problem. But originally or initially, we'll install all the warning pedestrian signs, the crossing signs, the advanced warning signs. There'll be also warning signs with the advisory speeds of, I think it's 15 miles an hour, 15, I think it's around about 15 miles an hour ahead. Uh, and that, and, and with the slowest speeds, everybody's more aware of what's happening at the intersection. So um, it, it gives it gives a better order and it allows for the pedestrians also to not have to look for cars in so many directions. Um, so um, you, we have about, 25 roundabouts in the ground and we just did a study a safety study of all of them and could not find one one accident in the last two years that involved a pedestrian so um the, our experience so far has been that um no pedestrians have been struck at one of our roundabouts at this time we're allowed to, the, to park on the street with that change there will not be, you will not be able to park within the circulatory roadway itself. Um, so uh, you could park after that point, but in the circulatory roadway, I don't believe that that um, you will be able to park on the street. Um, I have a circle drive that has a cedar tree in the middle. Yes, we're not touching your your cedar tree. And and we have um, we have more detailed plans that we're more than welcome to made available to you so you can actually see um, the geometry. You know, Derek had an exhibit, but we have more detailed plans that show exactly, you know, where the curves and, and how the intersection is laid out in relation to your yard. So we can make that available if you guys would like to see that. That's all I see in the chat. I guess, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Uh, I fully support the roundabout. I think this is a, a great location to clean up this uh, uh, very weird intersection <laughs> that was modified a number of years ago. My only concern is Choctaw Trail. Uh, that's one of the collector streets that goes into the Western Hills neighborhood. And it appears that you're cutting off uh, access from South Bend Las Vegas Trail and uh, you know to Choctaw both in and out. Uh, I think that the the hooded left is nice for the gas station, but I really think that a, a hooded left would be more important to the neighborhood. Uh, yes, so I believe that um, I believe that we we evaluated that, and um, maybe Derek has a little bit more detailed information about that. Um, because I don't know the specifics of the access for the street. Yeah. Um, I, I, to the roundabout, but it appears that the southern 
uh, median south of the roundabout, we would actually have room for a left turn lane uh, you know, to allow some stacking to go into uh, the I mean, neighborhood on Choctaw. Yes. So yeah, I, be, that, I, I, that, was I, a, that was a request by the transportation management. So city staff within TPW uh, requested to um, to only put this, uh, as you can see, this left turn hooded or this left hooded lane. Um, I, I think it's because it's is near this intersection. This 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 opening right here is near the intersection, and I think they wanted to improve um, uh, this. Hey, uh, Jay, are you online or? Yeah, yeah, Derek, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Good evening. Can, yeah. Can you shed some light on on the reason on reasoning on this left turn lane on this left? Yeah, certainly. Uh, so this was a conversation that was had um, with uh, the city's traffic uh, management group. And, and by the way, my name is Javen Austin. I'm a consultant working on behalf of uh, GEI, who are the prime consultants on this project working on uh, for, with the city. Um, yeah, early on the project, we looked at a, a series of alternatives related to the that Choctaw Trail. Um, some of the considerations were it does have some access points out of that same neighborhood along Las Vegas Trail to the north and the south. And then ultimately, I think, Derek, like you were saying, it had to do uh, mainly with the proximity of the intersection to Choctaw Trail itself. Um, I believe the decision was made that there wasn't quite enough space um, from the intersection from the roundabout to Choctaw Trail to keep that as a full access uh, meeting opening like it is today, uh, since Las Vegas Trail is more of a continuous more north-south roadway currently how it exists today. So um, yeah, that was, I believe the decision was made then to uh, really only allow that hooded left turn for the northbound movement into the, the gas station side uh, at that point. And I believe too, now now I'm getting a little bit more memory. My memory is coming back. Um, I believe it's because with the distance that is required to provide your deceleration lane and your storage lane from the roundabout going um downstream i think that now in the in we have a new access management policy that was adopted um by city council last year and um and so i believe that that uh, that's a minimum uh of like 500 to 800 feet or something like that so i think that's why we just didn't have enough distance you know from the roundabout to the roadway to provide and meet those those requirements for the left turn storage lanes and the median openings, but we can certainly uh, provide that in, that those details to you, so um, you know what that that came from. And 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 the the, you know, sometimes we try to maintain access at all at all possible, you know, when we're uh, reconfiguring you know projects, but we also are trying to take into account safety and. We don't want traffic to 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 uh, be stacking into the roundabout because then it will. It will kill the circulation in the roundabout, and um, uh, that's not good. So, um, but yeah, we certainly can provide you the details about uh, that and, um, and and have more information provided. Thank you, Jay. I didn't know you were on the line. <laughs> yeah, sure thing. And and if I can go back, maybe in uh, Anne, your first question that you had tonight. Um, there, there, we have conducted some research this year nationwide in July of 2020 related to first responders at roundabouts. Um, we're actually presenting those results next week on Thursday during the Federal Highway Administration's National Roundabout Week. And an interesting thing that we received in the feedback from, from that national research project was that a majority of first responders uh, said they actually prefer roundabouts over traffic signals and stop controlled intersections. And uh, there's really a variety of reasons one of them was that it, it does slow vehicle speed and make the intersection safer. Uh, but also when you think about a traditional traffic signal, you tend to get that, that queuing where vehicles are stopped at a red light and the fire truck driver is trying to weave their way through, you know, the, all those vehicles that are stopped at a red light every once in a while at, the, at a signalized intersection. And then once they're in the intersection, they have to worry about those vehicles that are traveling perpendicular to them, say at 35, 40, 45 mile power speeds or higher. And so that brings a lot of stress on those truck drivers, those fire truck drivers, not knowing you know, during a, a code three response, 
if the people are going to actually stop that are going the, the opposite direction of them or perpendicular to them. And there's other reasons too, but we'll we'll be publishing those results uh, later le later next month, so the public will be able to see those as well. Um, but yeah, that is some some current research that was just conducted this year. Excellent, thank you for that. Has the artist been this se selected for the public art? Um, so the public art component is actually managed by the public the public arts council, and and I believe that um, that they identify public art is like two percent uh, of of whatever the cost of the project is, um, and and so they manage you know they they're managing that project separate from ours. They're just trying to coordinate with our schedule, and we're trying to also make sure that. Um, that if, if we need to provide, you know, certain things, so whenever they, they come with their art, you know, if, if they want to let their art and things like that, that we're providing like power sources and stuff like that. So whenever they come, it's, it's an easy transition for them to install their art. They're in the very early stages of um, selecting an artist. Um, so I think that we met with them um, the week before last, I think. So they're in the very early planning stages of, of the public art component, and I'm sure that they also are going to be having public meetings as well. Maybe they need to install a 360-degree camera in that art. <laughs> you know, we can, we can all just hope. <laughs> <laughs> just so <laughs> Okay, I don't see additional questions on the on the chat. Um, you guys um, have been great. Thank you so much for spending some of your evening with us. Um, hey, Lissette, Lissette. Yes, we, we do have three people who have called in, so they won't have access to the chat. So I'm going to unmute them. In okay. Case they cool. need to, uh, in case they would like to ask a question, uh, I'm going to do it one at a time. Um, so. I'm just going to work my way down the list. So if your phone number ends in 04, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, if you have any questions, you feel free to ask. I don't hear anything. I'm going to go down to uh, if your phone number ends in 52. You're unmuted now. Yes, I was just wondering how the traffic would be handled during this construction, you know. It's a main thoroughfare to get from over to the pharmacies and all that. Um, that's a very good question. So we have not finalized the traffic control plan yet, but the roundabout gets built in stages. So it gets built in sections. You know, we try to do like a quarters at a time. So um, to maintain, uh, you know, traffic, you know, flow during the, the construction. So, because there's schools nearby, we will have a restriction, uh, uh, you know, during the morning peak and then, you know, by before dismissal, you know, the contractor will have like restricted hours to work. And then um, we will notify, um, you know, emergency vehicles, police and fire, et cetera, and the residents like with message boards, if we're going to have like intermittent uh, lane closures. Um, so sometimes we might have to close, you know, certain lanes for a small amount of time or, or a short amount of time or for, for a phase, but we won't be shutting the intersection completely. So we will, um, sometimes that requires that we, we you know, construct or, or um, add additional temporary pavement so we can make sure that you, we maintain that two way, you know, traffic, you know, through the intersection, but uh, which makes it a little bit more costly uh, and, and takes a little bit longer to build, but, um, we will be communicating with the residents and um, with all the agencies uh, uh, on the project. And we will be using message boards, electronic message boards on Las Vegas Trail and uh, Normandale to make sure that everybody's aware at least seven days in advance of the traffic changes. Will there be any problem getting in our driveways? We have to maintain access to, to your property at all times. So, um, we'll have to we'll have to coordinate that sometimes 
um, you know, we can if we can do half of the row at a time, we can. If we have to, um, you know, work with the property owner and do and do highly strong concrete that can be poured and, and open, you know, within a day, you know, we'll we'll, we'll have we'll have some techniques and, um, and and some strategies, but we have to maintain access to your property. You can't just lock you out of your property. Thanks. <laughs> So we will not be doing that. <laughs> okay, there's uh, there's one more caller. I'm gonna unmute. Uh, if your call, if your phone number ends in eight seven, I'm gonna unmute you as well in case you have any questions. I don't hear them. I don't hear anything. I think we're. Okay, I think that we we cover all of the questions in the chat. Oh, there's a comment. Thank you for the presentation. I thought about using this intersection because it's such a mess. I think around that is a much better idea than an intersection with traffic lights. <laughs> Thank you so much. We don't we don't get comments like that ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and there's another comment by Tina Shaw. She was asking about the schedule. Uh, yes, it's in winter. The construction the, the construction start schedule. Is in winter 2020. That answers your question. We're there. Twenty or twenty-one. Twenty twenty-one. We are. Yeah. So. A year we are, away. Yeah. Yeah. We're about a year away because we're right. at sixty percent with design, and then um, it's a good thing that we don't have to acquire right away because that's one of the longer lead things that that drags our schedules. But we do have to do uh, utility. Uh, we, we have some utilities that will have to be relocated. And so we just began that process of coordinating with all the utilities to identify, and then they'll have to design their relocation and they'll have to do their construction to relocate the utilities, et cetera, for us to be able to get to begin construction. So the, those activities, um, they're the longest lead time, the utility coordination and the right away acquisition. So, um, we probably will be getting to final design, you know, sometime, you know, late spring, or early summer, but then depending on that, that utility component, um, you know, it takes, it takes a month to advertise and then it takes several months to award a construction contract. And we had to have a couple of more public meetings uh, to, to let the public know the progress and before construction. So, I know it seems like a long time, but this this year has gone by so fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that before we know it, we'll blink and it'll be September next year. <laughs> we really do appreciate that. You're welcome. We we're very proud of this project. Uh, and and I think that it's going to be a huge improvement because it's going to, as you guys are aware, there's there's a lot of uh, not very um, uh, good activity up and down Las Vegas Trail sometimes, and you know nobody's going to be able to try to get away from doing something they're not supposed to, you know, uh, at 50 miles an hour up and down Las Vegas Trail because they run, nobody's going to slow them down. So. It's it's going to be very good, I think, for the neighborhood and with the public art component, especially if it's lit. Um, it, it's 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 going to be like a really good um, way to showcase the neighborhood, something positive for the neighborhood. So I think it's going to be a good good project. I hope so. Any other questions, comments? Um, Derek Derek uh, posted his information. So he's both his email. And his phone, uh, and he's he's available to uh, talk to you guys or respond to your emails all, uh, anytime. Uh, we're working uh, remotely, but we're working like we're working in our building, so uh, you can always reach out to him, and we'll provide you. He can if you email him, he can provide you with a specific lay, uh, detail of the plans that shows uh, that your yards and your trees are not getting impacted. And that kind of thing. <laughs> 
his oh, information is also on the mailer that was sent out. So if if you're on the phone and can't see the screen, uh, if you got the mailer about the meeting, his his email and phone number is also on that. Thank you, Jeff. What? Okay, I got one more question on the chat box. What is the public art concept going to consist of? We do not know. <laughs> uh, because the like I mentioned earlier, we met with the public art folks a couple of weeks ago to try to find out if they had an idea. And they still are in the very early planning stages. So the first thing that they have to do is that they have to go to the Public Art Council to get the project um, uh, approve for them to hire an artist and then they'll do um you know they'll they'll do a call for 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 submissions from different artists and then they'll select an artist and then once they select the artist then they work with that artist to determine and they will be having public meetings also uh please this the, the, that's a separate project uh from ours but there will also be uh reaching out to the community for input and to present the, the public art concept as well. So I'm sure that as soon as they reach in on artists and they start the, you know, they start actually planning the, the public art component that you guys are also going to be contacted and, and they will come talk to you guys as well. Uh, how will they stop cars from landing into my house? Well, the roundabout geometry, it is, it is, it is constructed with the intent it's a physical, it's a physical element that forces cars to drive at slow speeds. So where the roundabout, the vehicles are approaching the roundabout, the geometry, the curvature on the road forces them to slow down. I mean, it just, it just, the road just actually makes them to slow down. So the entry approach speeds are less than 25 miles an hour because that's that's what the geometry is gonna do. Now, if someone is um, you know, driving under the influence or something and, and you know, they're not aware of what they're doing or paying attention or something, then that can happen at any intersection. Uh, it always but, happens. You know, but at the roundabout, you have that, that, that enforcement with the roadway configuration that just forces traffic to to slow down when they're entering the intersection uh so i cannot um like like i said we have videos that we have um we have videos that we have shot of some of our roundabouts here in for worth that that show how the traffic you know uh flows and how they navigate the roundabout and we're more, more, more than welcome to share that. But um, um, what we, what, Jay, did you want to add uh, additional information about our safety study? Yeah, I can. Um, and, and then just to add to what you said too, we, we also sign the advances of the roundabout for motorists to slow down to 15 miles per hour uh, using advanced advisory speed signs. So um, along with the geometry of the roadway, we're also alerting motorists to slow their vehicle speed to 15 miles per hour to safely go through the, road, the roundabout itself. Um, but as Lisette mentioned, we did do a safety study in Fort Worth where we gathered data from nine of Fort Worth's multi-lane roundabouts across the city. And the safety uh, numbers or crash data was pulled from the years 2016 to 2018, so three years worth of data. Um, when we, after we got all that information in, we analyzed it and then we compared the safety data in Fort Worth to what we have as far as national uh, crash models for roundabouts. And the results came out where Fort Worth's multi-lane roundabouts are actually operating about 20% safer than the national average for similar types of roundabouts uh, throughout the country. Um, currently, we're over 7,000 roundabouts that have been built in the United States in the last 25 years, uh, just to kind of get perspective. So nine of, of the 7,000, you could say, were, were studied here locally in Fort Worth and then compared back to national averages for safety. And I heard Lisette mentioned before, but I'll reiterate for some folks that might not have been on the call initially, is that uh, we didn't have a single pedestrian um, fatality or serious injury or really any reported crash 
at any of the roundabouts. Uh, so, so nine roundabouts over a three-year span. So, essentially, 27 years uh, of roundabout data. Uh, there were there were no reported crashes with pedestrians involved, which was a very positive sign as well. I have a question. If we have a neighbor that decides they're interested in this, is this a recording so that they could actually view it or listen to it? Yes. Yes, the, the meeting is being recorded and Jeff can go into the details on that. I have another question on the chat box. How will this roundabout compare in size to the one in Clear Fork? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the size Clear Fork. Jay, do you remember the size of the one on Clear Fork? That's one of the very early it's ones. Two, that was it's built. a two lane. It's a two lane roundabout. So it. Yeah, it's larger. It's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. This this diameter. Uh, I guess just to give a, a little bit of perspective on the size is is right about 140 feet in, in diameter, and so um, I think the question is probably the the Clear Fork main over there. Um, just, I guess, probably east, southeast of the, the project where it would be um, over south of I-30. Um, if memory serves me right, that is a, I guess, what we call a two by one roundabout, more or less, two lanes circulating um, in the intersection. That that size is right around 170 feet in diameter at Clear Fork, Maine. So this diameter of this roundabout will actually be about 30 feet less than the roundabout over there at Clear Fork. Now, that this does have a two lane uh, free ride going north on Las Vegas Trail. It's, it's, it's got, I believe, two lane, two lane on the um, southbound, but one, um, I believe we're circulating only one around the roundabout, right, Jay? Yeah, that is correct. As a, as a northbound motorist approaches the roundabout on Las Vegas um, Trail, they, they will actually use that bypass lane to keep going on Las Vegas Trail. And then the other lane will go into the roundabout for those folks that are trying to make a U-turn, a left turn, or a through movement. Uh, the through movement continuing north on or northwest on North North Normandale Street. But that is correct. There is a single lane that's what we call a free flow movement. So the essentially the people that want to stay on the Las Vegas Trail and head north will will make that that movement in that lane. Between the outside. Thanks, Jay. Will I lose the grass area where the flags are now? Okay, so the flags in, in, that you see now is because uh, we're, we're doing uh, uh, subservice utility exploration. So basically we're just trying to locate, you know, what the utilities are. Um, and so um, you shouldn't lose your grass. Um, and and any, any, anything that we just start with the project uh, grass or, 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 you know, will, will restore to, to this, to the same condition that it was before or better. Um, but I believe that the flags that are there now, um, is, it's just my consultant trying to, to gather some, uh, subservice utility engineering data on, on, on the utilities. Um, uh, can you put the picture up again, Derek? It's there. It's up. Oh, awesome. I was looking at the chat box and didn't realize that the picture was back. Sorry about that. <laughs> <sighs> so this one is an exhibit, which doesn't really like give you like a lot of detail, but we actually have um, a, a plan layout. Um, I wish that was easily handy, but uh, we can certainly provide that as well. So to yeah. answer the question about the recording, uh, yes, it's yeah, we are. It is recording. Uh, I, I haven't stopped it yet. Um, it will eventually go up on our city's YouTube page. Um, and when we have a project page for this uh, on our website, it will be available there as well. Um, this project does not currently have one because we're uh, we're in the middle of updating our website. Um, and it's going to be another couple of weeks before I can get another project placed. Um, but it will be there eventually as well. 
Um, another question on the chat box. I live on North Normandale Street and the city said that we've been selling sidewalks on the street. Do you know if that's still going to happen? Um, we can certainly follow up uh, with our, um, either with our neighborhood groups or with the safety group and see um, and get and follow up, you know, get you some information about that. Um, Any more questions? Mr. White, you have anything you yes, want to add? You want to add anything else you want to add? No, I think that's it until next time. I mean, right before we go to construction, we have the, the next public meeting. Okay. Okay. Well, if 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 that's all we have. Um, we want to thank you again for your time today. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us, uh, to Derek. Um, and Derek, um, I'm always available also. So, um, and we can provide uh, as much information as you guys need um, to answer all your questions. So um, with all, with that, um, you know, I'm ready to close, Jeff.